Hi everybody, I'm Corey. I'm the Dungeon Master for Opportunity Roll. I want to say thank you guys for tuning in and coming to the next episode. It means a lot that you guys keep listening, and we have a ball doing this. So, again, thank you. Um, enjoy this episode, and I will talk to you again. Alright, so hi everybody, I'm Corey, I'm the Dungeon Master, thank you for joining us for the next episode of Opportunity Roll. I'm here with Group One, say hi everybody. Hi everybody. Hello. 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 Start at the bottom, let's start with Rodeo. Oh, starting at the bottom, hi, I'm Rodeo, otherwise known as Maxwell, and I play Aeson Goldhand, the Half-Elf Fighter Cavalier. And Red? Hi, I'm Red, and or Edda, and I'm playing Maggie McKellen. And I am your bard of glamour. And Jasper. Hi, I'm Jasper, and today I'll be playing your neurotic warlock, Willem. And last but not least, Winter. Hi, I'm Winter, and I play Charity, your tiefling cleric. Now, for anybody who's been listening, we left off kind of on a cliffhanger last time. We were in the midst of combat with a troll. Um, we had had just somebody running out of this this lovely forested area path um, onto the road in which they met with Group One. Um, with them uh, alongside is a bit of trouble. Uh, a large troll uh, has made their way out of the forest and is currently battling the group. We've had some pretty decent blows so far. It's it's made a few swings, a couple of bites, but so far we haven't really had much of it anything else um so let's let's kind of see what what kind of stuff this combat has for us if uh we are starting it's definitely at... scary thing is way yeah. bigger than us so i believe it is edmund's turns because from my records our last one was charity correct yep okay she beat the hell out of him with the spiritual weapon if i remember correctly yes yeah. i did and she inflicted wounds so let's see what Edmund would do here, because he's well, he's got a few things that he could do. Uh... Um, can as a as a free action, can Asan? You know, he's bracing his shield and waiting for this thing to beat the shit out of him. He's gonna be like, Edmund, do you know what this thing is? Oh, um, he probably wouldn't know that off the top of his head. Let me do an Arcana check then. So, oh, that's a natural 20. Yeah, I'm, um, that's, that's impressive. <laughs> uh, so with a 26, he's just going to scream troll. Kill it, kill it, kill it with fire troll. Um, let's see. He is going to move out of the cart. He's going to hop down, so that's 10 feet because that's difficult terrain. Uh, so that's uh, 10, 15... 20, he's going to try to see if he can kind of curve around here to get just around Aeson to shoot his magic um, without accidentally potentially hitting somebody in the back. Um, oh, okay, so let's roll a 1d4 stress meter. A 6? 1d6, sorry. I was like, did you roll a 6 on a d4? Oh, geez. All right. So that is 5 to the stress of meter. All right, now in Edmund's turn, that becomes the hey, troll's Corey. turn. Yes. For all those who don't know and maybe new to listening, uh, the stress meter is what exactly? Um, wild magics in my world uh, have an emotional connection to their magic. Um, so in doing so, I've, I've created this thing called a stress meter. In certain stressful situations, you can roll a d4 anywhere to um, a d10. And those numbers are added to your overall stress. Once that stress meets its critical limit, which is usually around 20 at max for me, um, uh, a magic, uh, a wild magic surge will go off. Um, once that happens, they'll drop down to about half of their usual number. Uh, and if they take a full rest, they go down to zero. Um, 
but yeah, it's a it's an interesting system that's a different way of doing it than what the player's handbook has. Oh geez, that's that's a lot of stress right there then. Yeah, I think he's currently sitting at fifteen. So um, he's definitely looking stressed. I will say that completely. All right, so that will end Edmund's turn. Edmund is right there. I think the troll. Well, I know he's got disadvantage, but I think he's going to swing here at the guy he's been chasing. Makes oh, sense. Oh, no. Not me again. Troll makes three attacks, one with its bite and two with its claws. So here we go. I'll cut that part out. I don't want to. I just. Sorry. Uh, one with its bite, so that's a 10, that'll miss. And does an 11 break your armor class? No. Then both will miss. Whew. Wait, does that give him damage to every attack or just the first? Um, let me go read over Unwavering Mark. Uh, if a creature marked, uh, disadvantage on any attack that doesn't target me. For one turn, while within five feet of me. Yeah, until the end of your next turn, this effect. Okay. So he is he is within five feet of me. Yeah. And so it still applies. Like if he were to move away five feet, like to for example, oh, yeah. like there, yeah, he would yeah. take a yes. he would take a tax of opportunity, but um, he wouldn't be marked anymore. Okay, and then the passive ability, and that'll end his turn. Maggie, your turn. <clears throat> okay, because I need... <clears throat> I don't have any ranged anything besides uh, some other things that could affect everyone else. So just Maggie is going to go... Teeth. Here. Oh, jeez. And she's going to hit it with a rapier. Alrighty. Hell yeah, 25! <laughs> That That's a natural 20. Deal damage. All right. Uh, so seven full solid damage from a natural 20. A wondrous strike kind of comes around. The, the blade kind of curves and whips and cuts right through this guy. Is there anything else you'd like to do? Uh, if I if I tried to back up, I know I'd get an attack of opportunity. And I mean, you could take that chance. He still has disadvantage. That's true. I'm going to try. I'm going to take that step back. All right, I'm pretty sure 11 will miss. That's a bite, but it's the same bonus to the swing, so... Okay, yep, no, it doesn't hit. All right. Uh, Aeson, your turn. All right, I'm going to give it all I got with two attacks, so... 26. That'll hit. 24. That'll hit. 14. So, 24 damage. Jesus, Pete. All right. Anything else you'd like to do? Um, Let me see. Let me look at my action. Have I gotten hit yet? No, I haven't. I can't use my position of privilege. I'm out of action searches. Bonus proficiency doesn't make it. I don't want to try to ride this thing, so going to the saddle is no good. Um... Who wouldn't want to ride a troll? I mean, I haven't subjugated it. I'm yet. good. Harry Potter, he's already done it once. I'm good. That they they have a lot of snot. They have a lot of snot. I'm good. I think Aeson doesn't necessarily... So, like, at this point in his life, he doesn't necessarily realize, like, his unwavering mark is, like, an ability. Like, he just... He saw this thing going after Willem, so he did it. And, like, now he's just... He just smashes this thing and he thinks he's he's doing pretty good. So he's not going to use an unwavering mark on this turn. All right, that's fine. I'll just play it like he is. <coughs> he doesn't know, like, all these things. All right. Well, it's, it's, it's up to you. I'm not going to say whether or not you should or should not do it, but... Um... Character speaking, I should, but... Uh, Aeson speaking, no, no one else has been hit, so he doesn't view this thing as a, a very big threat, so he's just going to keep slicing into it. You know what? You know what? Because you're, you're, I, I like that you're, you're balancing yourself via your character. I think that's a good thing to do. Give yourself inspiration. 
Thank you. Uh, how is the the troll looking? Um. Well, it's it's looking bad, and then every time it goes to swing, it's not looking so bad anymore. Hmm. So it appears as if it has some regenerative qualities. About yes. Something. Something's going on. It's it's not. I mean, it's not perfect. You can still see a lot of the cuts that, that damage the fire. You know, that's all That's all made a good impact. Um, but he's not, like, bleeding out as much as you figured he might be. You know, there's not nearly as much damage as you would expect. So you're making a dent into him. It's just, it doesn't seem to quite be... Yeah, it's it's not yeah. it's not the same as like when we were fighting the giant goop monster in Kroko, yeah. where I was like, I need to stop this thing from attacking civilians and my friends. It's like this thing is just swinging at everything kind of stupid, like and not hitting anything. So why the? I'll just would you let everybody cut it up? Do you have a bonus or a side thing you'd like to do? Uh, no, my bonus action would have been to mark it, but it doesn't need to be marked. Okay. <laughs> I mean, it does, but it doesn't. You know, like Asan's mind. Um, oh, it so, it's going to be top of the round, and here's where things are going to get just as interesting. Because that that ground shaking that you felt um, when the first troll arrived, um, you're going to feel that it wasn't just one kind of general footprint. That rumbling, that movement, that crackling, you're still hearing that in the woods. And unfortunately, to your worst nightmare. Oh boy. A second troll is coming out of the area. This one looks Ah, a little bit bigger. Ah, It looks uh, a little bit larger. Oh boy. Um, And this one actually doesn't look like it's... This one actually, for some reason, doesn't look like it's from the area. Um, The trappings in which it wears are different. So this one might have wolf pelts and squirrel pelts and kind of patched together clothing from that one. This one's got fox and horse hair. This one's got different kind of hides that it wears. So it doesn't even look like this one is from the area. Uh, so let me go ahead and add him to the turn order. That's an 11. All right, we are currently at the top of the round. Boop. All right, William, it is your turn. Uh, you guys are facing down this troll. Another one kind of pops out from the bush, um, which kind of pops in your head. Like, you remember seeing more than one kind of different colors you're blurring through the trees um but you had no idea there were two of them definitely not good mm-hmm. Willem's gonna look a bit more anxious than he did before Maggie's probably gonna like turn like she has a plan in her head and then this thing comes out of the woods and she's like come on <sighs> Willem's going to have the exact same look. She audibly said that out loud, by the way. (laughs) Aton's like... uh, He's like... You can see, like... He's like that meme of that woman doing all the, like, the the calculus math in her head and stuff. He's like, how can I put myself between everybody and these two trolls at the same time? And he's not figuring out an answer for that. I think I know what Willem's going to do. Oh. Alright, so first off, Willem is going to cast Misty Step. Alright. And he's going to teleport over here in between the two trolls. Alright. We've yet to see Misty Step. What kind of... What, what do you want it to look like? Is it something special? like? So, uh, like a, a brief fog just kind of... Gr- flows around his feet and then up his body and then it moves to a different moves to where he's going to appear and then he appears there so he kind of disappears and reappears in the fog okay interesting and now that he's in between them he's going to use his crossbow and he's going to attack the one that he has been attacking all right this one right here uh yeah that one all right let's see 
Light crossbow. Let's see, you are... I don't think you're in an area to get advantage. Oh. No. Uh, well, if he's attacking this one, he has advantage because of fairy fire. Oh, that's true. Yeah, so natural... T- well, either way, the first one's a, a dirty 20, anyway. 20. Yeah, well, I mean, 20, 20 still hit. Uh, go ahead and you dealt 8 piercing damage. Okay. Uh, any bonus actions or anything else you'd like to do? Um, not that I can think of. I think Misty Step was my bonus action. Yeah. I, I, I was actually looking at that. I was like, wow, Misty Step's a bonus action. That's pretty cool. I know. It's very useful. <laughs> Willem, you've done your action. You've done your bonus action. Uh, that ends your turn. That makes it Charity's turn. All right. Um... She's going to take her sledgehammer out and whack it with an inflict wings. That is a natural 20. Hell that's yeah. a lot of that's a lot of dice. You guys have had two natural 20s now. That's a lot of dice. Whoa, whoa. We're costing it at level 2, so what? basically yeah. screw Holy. this guy. How much damage is that? Corey. 7 plus 4 is 11, plus 8 is 19, plus 16 is... I don't know, I need to calculate it for that last one, that's a big number. Uh, 24 plus 11 is 35. 35 points of necrotic damage. Huh. Ooh, 35 points said he can't heal back. Whoop, whoop. Is there any bonus actions, any movements that you'd like to do? Um, yeah, so we're going to take the spiritual weapon and beat the crap out of him again. That's uh, six damage. So that's 41 damage in total. Um, so that is some lovely damage. And then we got six more force on top of that. You outright kill this troll. Tell me how you do it. Ooh, that's a very good question. I mean, I guess since I hit him... Wait, which which part killed him? Was it the sword that sent him over the edge? Or did I already kill him just with my necrotic damage? That, that last six damage. Okay, yeah. So then I guess he gets a hammer to the face and his face starts melting off with necrotic damage and then through like his side the sword just stabs him while he's busy dealing with his face melting off. They fuck you. Yes. Alright. I will say the smell of this thing's corpse alone. Like you thought it smelled bad when it was alive. Whew. This thing is going to be disgusting. Ooh, as a free action, can I turn to the other one and be like, "You're next." But by all means, it'll it'll kind of hunker down a little bit. So let's remove that monster from the uh, turn order. Uh, that'll make it Edmund's turn. Um, Edmund just did Arcana's last turn, so it would not be out of out of the mist to say that he would tell you that a lot of your basic damage isn't going to do anything. Go with magic or go with fire. Neither of them lets him regenerate, is what he will say out loud. Um, and then I think he's going to cast Magic Missile. It never misses. It's magical damage. Why? No. Oh, no. Wrong. So that's five, four, and two. Eleven. Yeah. Your token calculator, Maxwell Coffin here. Oh, <laughs> well, this one's going to be fun. Okay. Um, I think with that, uh, he is going to... There's 10, 20... There's 25, 30, 35. And that's where he will end his turn. Uh, Troll's turn. Troll's going to walk right out on up to this girl who's uh, kind of standing in the middle of nowhere. No, Maggie. Bite. Claw. 
claw. Oh! But yeah, all those Maggie. hit. Maggie, no. All of them hit? Yeah, all of them hit. Oh no. That's seven. That's sixteen. Twenty-three. Oh my god. Uh, they That's weren't all crits, she's down. were they? She's down. Wait, they weren't all crits. No, they weren't. Oh, hold on. Twelve. The... So okay. twelve for the last one. So twenty-three, thirty-five. I'm at... I'm at one fucking health point. <laughs> so I can see like Maggie getting whacked around and she just like flies. Could I have her fly somewhere if she's getting whacked? Or is if you want if you wanna yeah, go all by all means. What direction Knock do you think he'd prone? Yeah. Probably I, I'd probably say he might backhand you and kind of whiff you off in the diagonal. Okay. And Maggie's gonna flying land right by Edmund and in between Charity and Edmund. I mean, it makes sense. If I'm getting whacked around by a troll, it makes sense. Fair enough. These things' strength is not anything to scoff at. All right. Now in the troll's turn. I will show them strength. All right, Maggie. So half your movement will be to get you up from being prone since you were thrown back. Um, so I'm going to use half, isn't it half movement or something like that to stand up or is it an action? Yes. So it'll be half movement. Okay. So she's going to like get back up and wipe the blood from her mouth and like spit it out. And she's going to be like, God damn it, these things. Um, ah, da, 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 da. Uh, can I give a bardic inspiration to someone? I'm going to sure. give a bardic of inspiration to Asan because she's like, you know what? I'm not doing this anymore. And she's going to like give a very um, inspirational song to him. To so be honest, can... the only inspiration he needed was her wiping her blood from her mouth. And that would inspire him enough to kill this troll. That's very true. <laughs> so, it's yeah. like, okay, buddy. <laughs> All right. Is there anything else you'd like to do for your turn? No, she's staying right where she's at. She's she's had enough being knocked around. Okay. Um, have you used your Have you used your action? I did that for the Bardic Oh wait, Bardic Inspiration's a, He's a in, bonus. That's mm -hmm. right. You right. Uh but, but you make a, fun of his teeth. Oh, you have cure wounds. But do I I'll use it on myself, yeah. I'm gonna use my cure wounds. You got one health, sweetie. <laughs> Yeah, I was just like, no, I don't need to use it on myself. And then I was like, wait, I'm at one health. If there was ever a time. <laughs> All right, so that is eight health back to her. So that puts you at, what, nine health total. All right, so that was your action, bonus action, your some of your movement. Uh, did you want to take a kind of a step back behind, like, Charity or Edmund? Or are you good there? Maggie's going to stay right there. Okay. All right. So it is Asan's turn. Asan, seeing this troll backhand his woman like 10 foot back, he, he's upset. He's going to go right there. And I'm going to try to grapple, grapple this thing. Oh, that's um, a 17. I, I got a 50 50 chance then because I got an athletics of plus seven. Um,. So he's going to try to grab this thing and hold down because Edmund oh, told it's... him. Okay, go ahead. Edmund told Edmund him Edmund. that it was, you know, his regular attacks weren't going to do anything to it and use fire or magic, and he doesn't have any of those. So yeah. he's going to try to hold it in place for the others to fuck it up. All right. Damn. That's 10. That unfortunately will not do it. Maybe it's just too big to really get a good grip. Um,. I mean, it's it's got nodules on him, you know. As you can see, like the bumps and stuff. Maybe he, uh, he's he's just not easy to grip. He's sweaty. He's probably got dew on him, tree gunk, uh, mud. Uh, he's he's not <laughs> he's not the clean, cleanest thing to grab. So I'd say you probably, you know, as you're trying to come back from holding, maybe you got this nice little nasty oil smear on your clothes. So what? So what I was picturing was Asan charged up to try to tackle him. Not realizing how strong this one was because you said it was bigger and stronger, <laughs> and just oh, like okay. crushed into it shoulder first, and it just stood there. Mm. And it's like, well, you're a big fucker, and that was it, you know. 
But at the very least now, Aeson is between him and pretty much the rest of the party. True. All right. Um, so that was your... That was my action. Action. Um, you should have a bonus reaction, or and I, you also had your movement, but I don't think that was your plan. <clears throat> that was 25 feet of movement, so yeah. I'm literally, I think, in the perfect position to, to be between him and everyone else. So I don't think Asun would move anywhere else. His bonus actions only like really apply if he hits with an mm-hmm. attack, and he didn't. So he is done with his turn. All right, Willem, it is your turn. Can I punch the troll with Eldritch Blast? <laughs> um, Eldritch Bash is a range attack, correct? Yes. So fortunately, not. I mean, you could cast it, but you would have disadvantage if you cast it within five feet of the monster. Could you manifest it, like, aesthetically as a fist? Please. Yeah, <laughs> sure. Okay. The The aesthetics of what you guys want to do, it can be any color, it can be any shape, It can it, feel free to, to kind of play with that. The only thing I am going to be nitpicky about when it comes to that is the wording and how it runs. Not what it looks like. Okay. So, how Willem's going to do this after hearing um, um, Edmund say that it's been, it's weak towards fire? He's going to start running towards this troll, and he's going to cast Eldritch Blast. Going to like throw a punch in the air, and the crackle of green energy is going to come out as this as this big green fist going at the thing to attack it. That'd be pretty cool. So, um, Jasper, just so you know, if you move. If you moved within five feet of him, you have disadvantage on ranged attack spells within five feet of him. So but if you stay where you are, like you're fine. He was starting to move, so kind of like. But if you move around. within his area, if you move within his area, you get super advantage. You Don't listen to him. He's enemy. lying. <laughs> Don't move there, Jasper. <laughs> If, if you move there, you will get your head chomped on by a troll. <laughs> That's the plan. I'm sorry, continue. All right, so that cool edge splash, you got a 23 to hit. That is going to hit. And that is an 8. Uh, I don't think you get the plus 6 because that's not a crit, technically. All right, and he's going to move like within range to the monster, and he's going to be saying, hit me, like really loudly. Oh, okay. Twice, Willem. So you'll move up 5 feet. Yep, oh, definitely. okay, perfect. Oh my god, what 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 did we we have two ASOs you know now? Roll me, me a persuasion. Oh, I don't awesome. like I don't like how we just turned at you. I don't like that one bit. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. So it's an eight, so he thinks he should still hit ASON, because ASON is obviously the more imminent threat. And we'll see. Charity, it is your turn. All right. We... Oh. Ooh. How much did that heal you for? Eight. Uh, yeah, she's got um, nine health in total. All right. Uh, all right, we'll leave it to the boys for now. They'll, they'll be fine. They'll be fine. All right. <laughs> Let the boys have their fun. <laughs> We're going to cure wounds you at a level 3, because I don't have any level 2 spell slots anymore. There you go, 25 health back. Thank you. So, um, with that heal, do you have a bonus action or anything you'd like to use? I don't know if, if Cherry's got... Stabby Stabby. Alright. Okay. Oh, yeah, that's right. As a bonus action, you can command it to attack. Alright, let's see what you get. No, that missed. I was going to say, it's like me with a plus seven, but a plus seven also got you a ten like it did for me, where I rolled a three. <laughs> you know what? It's actually going to let that hit. Go ahead and deal damage. It's, it's going to let it hit. Oh, nice. Okay. I'm very confused and concerned now. If I can grapple it, guys. 
Edmund's I can turn. One turn and throw it to the ground and make it prone, and then we can all fucking Rochambeau it. <laughs> is this all like right, the Pokemon so... move where they store all the hits that they take and then they bash it out on the Oh no! He's biting! That's the one. I think Edmund is gonna uh, show a little bit of color as he's gonna scream, Stupid kid, get out of the way, don't taunt it. Thank you, Edmund. No, no, uh, Edmund, I have Edmund. a plan. <laughs> Which one's he talking to? Um, he's, well, not you. He's talking to the small, younger boy who kind of drew them towards the group. Because um, I think so, at this point, Edmund might be older than Aeson. I Well, he's 21. Okay, Aeson's 23, so he's, yeah. yeah, okay, so they're about the same age. I was like, I thought, I thought Edmund was like 25. I was like, I'm a kid then. I'm going to cop All right, so he's going to manipulate it. And he's going to look like he's screaming, but vocally, you're not going to see anything. What you are going to see is if you ever opened the oven and you've seen like the warping of everything behind it, where the, 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 the air is just so hot, it kind of waves everything in it. You're going to see that kind of echo out of his throat and into the air. Uh, and then you are going to hear the most earth shattering um, nice. sound. Um, as he is going to cast Shatter at level three. Nice. It's ten foot square, so I'm guessing he's like he's like circling out. Like yeah, so he's he's aiming it kind of like behind the thing, so it's getting like the brunt of it, and you guys aren't being touched. He, it can easily be um, moved in that situation. Uh, so nice. let's see. That's uh, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22 uh thunder damage On a if it does not defeat yeah. the disease. Uh so let me check its constitution. Ooh, this might not be good. This might not do much of anything. That's a natural twenty with a twenty five altogether. Ooh. Holy um, shit. Um so I think he still takes half damage though. Um let's see here real quick. He does, but Corey, remember yes. remember the downside of shatter oh. that it can be heard from 300 feet away. So that's true. If you have well, anything I mean, else planned, really think of that. If you have anything else planned to run out of the woods at us, they can um, hear it now because that's a 300 foot boom. All right. So half of half of that is what? Oh, eleven. Shit. All right. Thank you. Um, so that is eleven from its turn. All right. That'll end Edmund's turn. Uh, it'll make it the troll's turn. Passive will go off. Oh, uh, whoops. Okay, there we go. Um, and the troll is uh, going to give you what you want, my man. Um, he's he's going to strike at you. All three attacks. Nice. 15, 22, and 22. They all hit. Alright, so nine. that is 9, 20, 30 damage. Okay, one sec. So I'm just going to add up how little health he has first, and then I'm going <laughs> to tell you what he's going to do. Okay. Does he have the spell shield? No. Um, no, but he is going to do something else as a reaction. Uh, what's right. 37 minus 25? 37 minus 25 is tw uh, 12. Okay, so... Would he be bleeding, like, a lot from that? <laughs> um, I'd probably... Yeah, yeah I'd probably say. Bloodied. According to the so he's going to wipe health. off the blood. And... Okay. He's going to point his finger at the troll and look very menacingly as he casts Hellish Rebuke as a reaction. Nice. Oh, nice. Let's get some Hellish Rebuke up in here. Nine fire damage. Damn. I will say, what you dealt versus what you took, I don't know if that was quite worth it, my man. Well, he did something. That's true. Well, you also said he... I, I believe you said he can't regenerate if he takes fire from Edmund. 
So this troll's gonna laugh. It's gonna chuckle. <laughs> um, he is going to turn five, ten. Why? Fifteen. Why? <laughs> Sonic, no. Pretty blonde girl. Oi. You better watch <laughs> it, fucking buddy. So he's he's just like enamored with you for some reason. He oh no, it's oh, my mantle of inspiration. Fuck. <laughs> he's he's enamored with you. It seems. Oh no. Um. So for 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 that, uh, Willem, you're going to get an attack of opportunity because he is going to leave your area of attack. Does Ooh, the spiritual weapon give an gonna... attack of opportunity? No, because it's not a creature with an reaction. Okay. But I wonder, can Winter use her reaction? Actually, the That's thing it. is that Willem cannot get an attack of opportunity because he already used his reaction to do Hellish Review. Oh, that's true. So he can't do that. Oh, it works out then. All right. Maggie, your turn. Uh, So if he's enamored by me, <clears throat> uh -huh. Maggie is going to look at him and be like, well, pretty blonde girl would love if you went away. Can I do a persuasion check on that? Uh, yeah, go ahead. Hey, 23! It's 23. Um, I mean... But, but, I mean, I I understand that. In, yeah, in a you very know what I mean? functional level. Well, because he's stupid, so I was hoping it'd work. I don't think he's quite that stupid, even with the persuasion of twenty-three. He exposed his backside. Um, no. I will. I will say it'll it'll pause him for a minute. Um, on his next turn, he won't move as he tries to calculate what the heck was going wrong there. Mm -hmm. Um, so as to where it doesn't make him turn. Next round, he has no movement. Okay. Nice. Um, I'm gonna. Uh, I think that was was that was um, that was my action, wasn't it, to speak to him? Yeah. Well, no. That's uh. Well, yes, because you used the skill, so persuasion yep. would have been your action. Yep. So that's all I can do right now. Hey, it worked. It did something. Yeah. Asan. All right. So Asan, seeing this big ass troll just walk past him like it wasn't shit, and then he's he exposed his backside though. So Asan with a targeted strike is going to first slice at the back of his knee. Okay. So let's see. Give me, give me hot dice, hot dice. That's a natural one. Um, you want me to roll the fub tub? Fub tub me up. Oh, no, no. The attacker snaps uh, his weapon, one or several teeth or claws. Uh, on a nearby surface, they re they receive one d three HP of damage if not a weapon, and furthermore, they must subtract the result of their d three from the damage from the attack. And blah blah blah. You're not using a uh, uh, animal form. I'm so... using a magical weapon though, so I feel like if maybe that has it. Yeah, so you have to roll a one d twenty on a one through three. Your weapon breaks. Okay, so you're not going to break, um, but you're going to hear a nice little cling as it kind of ricochets off kind of maybe a harder part of his hide, and you're going to feel like a, a nice ring go through the blade. You feel it, it wasn't going to break it, but who boy, if you hit it the right way, it probably could have. All right, so now I'm going to use my extra attack to try to slash across his back instead. All right. And I'm going to use my bardic inspiration. All right. D8 at this level, Maggie? Yep. 17 to hit. That'll hit. For 15 damage. All right. And Asun is going to scream, stay away from her! And he is going to uh, unwavering mark her. Mark him. I was about okay. to say me. <laughs> Why me? <laughs> so for... Those who don't know, unwavering mark makes it so that it must attack me, or it ups, or it um, sustains uh, a disadvantage. Yeah. 
And if it does um, it hit anyone will... else, I get an advantage, or I get an extra attack on my bonus action, which does extra damage equal to my fighter level, I believe. Yes. All right. So that is well, my second of four for the whole day. Okay. Is there any other things that you'd like to do? What would you allow me to do with a bonus action? Huh. What do you want to do with a bonus action? Let's let's talk that. Okay. So I'm still hooked on the sneeze. <laughs> I, I feel I feel like I know Charity is really like she is a courageous and strong fighter, and I also know that. Um, Edmund has like strength inside of him with his magic. So I want to try to like position my left foot and plant it in between this troll's legs. So one of them can get the idea if they push him, it will help them flop him over. Like, like kind of like a home alone thing, you know, or something like where you, you like bend over how, behind somebody. But how much movement do you have? I have all 30 feet of my movement. If you sacrifice all of that and your bonus action, I will allow you to give that bonus action basically as an advantage on a strength check if anybody chooses. All right, I will do that. It's very I, gracious. <laughs> it <say> is. <laughs> I will, I will, I will, let's just say this. Okay, so I'll use five feet of my movement to make this like reasonable. Okay. And move there. So it's like I stuck my foot like right there, like, you know, kind of like a boom. Like I plowed my foot in between his leg in in between his legs so that charity right here could see it and maggie can see it and edmund could also see it and it's like any one of them wants to like try to push him he'll like you know trip over my feet and fall over prone kind of like almost like if i was a kid it would be the i'm getting on my hands and knees and leaning behind him and you push him from the front and like even though it's not a hard push it's like oh shit i didn't know there was somebody leaning over behind me and i fall over and fall Okay. Now, normally, I would probably classify that as a full action. However, we'll see. I'll give up goes. twenty-five feet of movement and a bonus action. <laughs> and the only the All twenty-five right. feet of movement is simply aesthetic. If you want me to stay where I was, <laughs> I can. Like, I just felt like the aesthetic of him being there is more. Yeah, uh, it works. All right, so that'll end your turn. That will take it to Willem. Which, by the way, Willem, you've been told, um, you know, kid, get out of the fight, basically. Too bad he's not getting out of the fight. Yeah, pretty much. He's not gonna listen to that. But he is gonna be a bit smarter this time. Still gonna taunt the thing. So he's gonna yell at the troll, he's gonna yell, stay away from the pretty blonde lady, and gonna cast Eldritch Blast at it again. Okay, so 14 and 6, I will say, so your 14 is going to arc past the monster just ever so much, like a hair off. Um, and the the 6, you might kind of arc it a little bit. That arc might land just around Aeson's foot. Fub no, fub tub it. Fub tub it. Come on, fub tub. Fub tub? Yeah, it's I don't a natural know if it's, one. It's a fub tub. Yeah, but tub. I don't know if it's fub built tub? for magic. So let's see here. Fly, birdie, fly. Fly, birdie, fly. So here's what's going to happen. Okay, so then you're going to throw your arcane focus because that's oh, what damn. fly birdie fly is. Uh, the the component will slip from your hand uh, as you attack. Uh, your uh, do 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 do. So you make uh, a give me a dexterity check, please. All right. Oh, you are good. Those are both natural twenties. All right, so, so yeah, you you negate this. And you feel that if you had not been so dexterous and just had a moment of just like twirling that thing on your finger, that might have flown out of your hand, kind of right under that creature's foot. I picture it like he like he like used his backhand to cast it, and all of a sudden it like flew out, and he used his forehand to just catch it at the last second, like his wand. He was like, it'll just blast from underneath, and it like started flying out of his hand, and then he caught it. And that then perfect. Yeah. <laughs> and then boom. Oh, so, oh shit. And that thing like arced like fucking 30 feet wide. I'm down for that. Is there any bonus actions that you would like to use? Yes, there is. He would like to cast hex on the monster. Okay. And hex does what? 
Uh, Hex gives it disadvantage on one ability check, I believe. Holy okay. shit. Okay. What ability check would you like to make that? Strength. Yes! <laughs> I love you, Jasper. Lucky to you, Rodeo. Let me see if I can read. I just need to read that real quick so I know I'm following it. Hex. Here we go. Do, 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 do. Upon hit, basically, he'll deal an extra 1d6 necrotic, and the creature gets a disadvantage. Is it a saving throw or an ability no, check? It's just autumn. It's a, it's an ability check. So, so anything dealing with his strength. Yeah. Okay. And it's that not be... like he can't save from it. Hex is like an auto hit. All right. Um, is there anything else that you would like to do? Movements. I feel like he's probably going to feel the pain, finally, of what just happened. How he got slashed and bitten, so he's just going to stay where he is for a couple seconds. Yeah, you got you got hit pretty hard there. He did. Adrenaline has worn off. He's like, oh, damn, this hurts. <laughs> yeah, he felt, a, he felt a, a blade slice across from, like, his right shoulder blade to his left kidney. And he's like, what the fuck was that? <laughs> All right, I that will make quite... it Charity's turn. I go quite all weird. right, all right, all right. Fuck him up, Charity. Fuck his shit up. <laughs> We're just using all spell slots, aren't we? All right, we're gonna do another inflict wounds. Twenty-five right. hit. Twenty-five will hit. And I'm out of level two, so level three cost. That is 28 damage. And then let me double check how long my sword has been out for. I think that's four rounds now. Yeah, who's the... I'm the top of the round? Uh, no, I think uh, Willem is. He's with 20. Alright. So this would be the fourth round. Okay, so yes. My sword does have one more round, so it's going to move over here. All right. Thirteen will miss. God damn you, sword! <laughs> That's it. All right. <clears throat> Let's see. Edmund's turn. Uh, first off, thing just pushed right past the fighters and walked straight towards everyone else. That's that's going to cause some stress. Do a 1d4. Because he hasn't been struck. Oh, that's an 8. Oh! Wait, oh. you rolled a d4. Oh, that's a 20. That's 4. <laughs> my bad. I was like, wait, what? That's a 1. It's a 1. Oh my god. Oh my god. I mean, we're getting there. We're not far off. Stressed. I'm stressed. Everyone's stressed. Um. I'm stressed. But I think he's going to 5, 15, and you're not looking so hot. You got hit pretty hard. Uh, So he will cast... Oh, he does not have it. Oh, no, I'm so used to playing bards. He has no cure wounds. I was going to say, fucking divine soul sorcerer. (laughs) All right, let's 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 revamp that because I don't think he'd do that then, because that's not within his spell list. I he could, think he would probably have a feeling that this thing would be a, not a great chance to hit him if he backed up five feet, or ten feet, or however far he wanted to back up, because Asan yelled at it and cut mm-hmm. it, and Maggie said, you know, leave pretty pretty blonde girl alone. And oh, oh there's a cone. Don't you cast cone of cold? I'll kill you. <laughs> no, um, who's within fifteen feet in a cone from him? Uh, all of us. Uh, I was Everyone. About to say, I was about to say, uh. <laughs> I don't think okay. Was. If he moved um, up, and well, except for yeah. Jasper, I if think. He moved, if he moved up into the, yeah. so burning hands isn't gonna work. If he moved up into the, or if he moved straight up, he might be able to just graze it with burning hands. Or if he moved up into the right. I know exactly what he's going to do, and it's not great. Oh, no. Oh, no. He's going to cast Spider Climb. Oh, God. 
And then he's not going to grapple. He's going to walk up this thing's back to its skull. Oh, God. Um, and he's going to just kind of hold on as best as he can. Not trying to grapple it, just trying to not move. Uh, I think he's ready to kind of blow a spell in the back of this thing's skull in the next round. Asan's going to yell as a free action, push it over. Willem's he's already going to yell as a free action, and you call me stupid. That's fair. Maggie Got a and better charity. option! <laughs> he's screaming Maggie, Maggie like and the charity. charge is like, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> And Charity and fucking Maggie are having slight heart attacks as the two moms. <laughs> Maggie, remember, uh, if you push it, you get advantage on your strength check, and because of Willem, he has disadvantage on I the strength check. I have a negative check. one. I have a negative Ad one to strength. Advantage okay. versus advantage for you, disadvantage for him. No. Okay, so here's um, what's gonna happen. And you have Lucky. No. Okay. Ro Troll's turn. Uh, the passive goes off. He 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 doesn't understand why uh, Pretty Lady doesn't want to leave with him uh, instead. Uh, uh, so he's going to attempt a grapple check, which is going to fail um, because well, that I... gives him disadvantage with a ten. Doesn't she still need a grapple against it? Uh, true. She's yeah, got a negative so she... one. So athletics or um, wow. Yeah, so he's gonna he's gonna grab her and haul her up because she just rolled a four. And Maggie's gonna be like, "Let me go!" And she's gonna like like slam her fist into his hands, like, "What the fuck?" So let's let's make this a little bit more interesting. He'll grab her. Uh, he's he's. <laughs> let me see if I can do this right. He's still on her back. <laughs> Five. Oh my god. <laughs> Ten. Oh my god. Take him. Ah. Take him. Ah. Everybody. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> 30. That's Maggie, by the way. The whole time I've been saying things, that's what she's saying. Does a, does a 14 hit him? A 14 will miss. Uh, Charity, a 9 will miss. And she's going to be screaming, Charity, I thought help! <laughs> Alright, alright. I got this. I got this. I got this. Please inspire me. <laughs> Please. <laughs> Necesito Inspirito. Con guacamole. Oh my god, what the fuck? Shut up, Max. Shut up. <laughs> Maggie's gonna stab this guy in this finger. She's done. She's done trying to be nice to this. Alright, do me with disadvantage because you are... Actually, can you even attack while grappled? Yes, you guys. Yeah. Well, it depends on where he has his hands on me. Like, if he has me he's, around he's, the waist. He's bear hugged you. Oh god. Yeah, he's he's bear hugged. He's like off carrying you off. Ah, uh, um. Actually, I was thinking, can I do thunder wave again? But that would hurt Edmund too, wouldn't it? Um, I think yeah, it would hurt probably pretty much everybody if he, because you would have to basically target yourself because you're grappled by him. Yeah. So I don't even know if you could do that um, while grappled. Okay. All right. I'll just stab him. Well, at least tempt him too. Okay. Well. 12 will miss. So Maggie's like, help! Help! Asan? Asan, feeling inspired by Maggie's cries for help, is going to try to run and tackle, at least grapple this thing. Let's, uh... Okay. Just stab it! Why are you trying to hug it? Stab it! Because it, grappling stops it from moving. So it's holding Maggie, and you're trying to hold it. Yeah. That's a lot of weight. Yeah, yeah, it has Edmund let's, too. All right, so then let's go ahead and negate its disadvantage and give it a flat roll instead of giving you disadvantage. Okay, it's just straight strength against strength because right. that is a crap ton of weight you're trying to lift. I'm not trying to lift it. I'm just trying to like well to it. hold no, on to. That's still a lot of mass. All right. Oh, you might have this. That's an eight. Yeah, it's that's twenty six. So you kind of like. Captain America, the tree, and the yeah, the skull. I'm like, like when Captain America's trying to hold the helicopter back, you know, I'm like grabbing onto like the bar or the the tree, and I'm holding the the troll by my other arm. The, the shirt sleeves on your shirt like rip, and you got the rippling oh. back. To the oh. <laughs> I'm yelling at everybody. I'm yelling kill <laughs> as I'm holding onto like the tree and this fucking troll. 
All right, so I think that's it for you. Let's head over to William. It is your turn. Will- Willem, sorry. Not William, Willem. This is me looking through all my spells, trying to find the most effective thing I can do. <laughs> I could either be stupid again and join the party on the troll, or... <laughs> be smart. Willem's gonna that's, be smart. That's not me talking, that's that's the monster talking. Just be smart, just stay over there. <laughs> you know where your place is. Oh, God. Puny human. Hmm. <laughs> He's going to join it, uh, Edmund on the back of this creature using Misty Step. Uh, he's going to Misty Step up there? Yep. All right, so here's what we're going to do. Here, You're going to need to make a dex check for me to keep your balance after you Misty Step. It's kind of like teleportation. There's still always kind of... You, you need to be agile to do this. Okay. Kind of like Nightcrawler from X-Men. Yes, that, that's, yeah. the, that's So the you'll, you'll bamf. All right. Yeah. So you'll you'll tell you'll you'll teleport. You'll do that nice misty kind of water texture thing, mm-hmm. uh, and that is thirty feet. So you should be able to. Oh yeah, just enough, just enough. Yep. All right, now give me a dex check. Okay. Oh, whoops! Sorry. Okay. So the original is a sixteen. You're going to, you're not going to fall. Um, you're going to make it, but it's a very edgy kind of thing. You're kind of standing like next to like the shoulder type area. Um, so across from you is, is pretty much Edmund just kind of standing there. And you're going to notice he's not really holding on. Um, his feet look like they're, they're like this troll is his gravitational pull. Like he is standing on this troll from the side. It's weird. Um, and he's just got his hand at the ready with a spell that's, you know, it's, it's powerful. Something's going on. I was about to say, would I have been able to hold on to Edmund to stay on the troll? But no, let's not do that. Yeah, it may not be good. He's already stressed enough as it is. Exactly. I'm going to cast Eldritch Blast instead. Okay. <laughs> oh, that'll be a disadvantage. It doesn't matter. 16 will hit. Finally, seven hits. So seven damage. It's not bad. Not bad damage. Charity, your turn. She's going to run up here. And how many people are on its back? Like, is there still a clear shot that I can actually hit it? It's holding Maggie in a bear hug um, from, like, kind of in front of her. So he's, like, bear hugging her. Um, on the right shoulder is Edmund. On the left shoulder is Willem. Um, and then holding on to the leg of this creature is Aeson. Um I can still hit it, like, square in the back. That'll hit. 24 will hit. 21 damage. 21 necrotic damage. And oh, my sword goes away. Alright. Is there anything else you'd like to do? Not so she's just screaming, let her... Go and beats her on beats him on the back. All right, Edmund's turn. Um, well, that's I hate to do this, but it only makes sense. One d ten for stress level. That's a six. <clears throat> Magic surge. Huh. Oh hell yes. Um. Make a wisdom saving throw uh, against your own spell save DC. If you fail, you are polymorphed into a giant dragonfly for one minute. A wisdom saving throw. Oh, perfect. Spell save DC is a 14, 16 saves. Um, So that will not come to fruition. (laughs) I think he's going to cast Magic Missile at third level. So that's three, four, so that's five, right? 23 damage um, directly to the skull of this thing. So uh, you'll just see this, this energy kind of gush from his hand, smacking this thing. Uh, the back of the head, um, 
Willem, and it's just going to create this this nasty, magical, this just <sighs> gust and just destructive. Okay. Oh, it is still bloodied. Uh, I think it's going to do the the strength check. It's just going to try to break from that strength check. Um, so it's going to roll. That's a twenty. Uh, with him already having disadvantage on holding it, it evens out to a flat skill check between the two of them. Uh, okay. What's he trying to do? He's trying to break from your grapple, so I need you to do your your strength check, because he's rolled a 20. That is a natural one. What is with these fucking rolls? Hey, I mean, to be fair, you guys have also gotten your fair share of natural 20s. Yeah, but I've gotten like three natural ones. Well, it evens out. All right. Um. So he's going to... Oh, God. Uh, he's going to break free uh, from you. Um, and just We're just going to say it's all trees from here. He's, he's moving 30 feet out into the trees, into the forest. Darker, Taking darker, a, deeper. Attack of opportunity from me. Yep. And he will get one from uh, charity as well. Come on, give me that natural twenty. Thank you. My computer's being weird. A twelve okay. will not hit. My guess. Twelve will miss. And a fourteen, unfortunately. No. Yeah. <laughs> Can I use my uh, my inspiration to try to hit it again? Um, you can use your inspiration added to your 14. I'll allow you to add that to your last attack, yeah. Normally it'll say after, uh, before it was... No, 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 my, my, the little dragon circle thing. Her I'm DM inspiration, she's asking if she yeah. can re-roll. Oh, yeah, yeah, of course. Okay. That'll hit. That is a 20. 10. 10 damage. Oh. I am mad. It's only getting 15 feet into the forest. Um, you're going to break its kneecap. Yes. Fuck you. Yeah, fuck, yeah, fuck it up. Smacking it with this huge war hammer with a 20. Doing 10 bludgeoning damage straight to the knee. Oh, alright. <clears throat> so, it is 15 feet in. Maggie, you are grappled. Any attack has disadvantage. It's my turn? Yes. Okay. Okay, this is gonna... Maggie wants to wash her mouth out with soap after this, but she's gonna try to bite his hand. <laughs> no. Just, I mean, to make him let it go, guys. Jeez. Yeah, by all means, go ahead and... and um, I think that's just a basic weapon attack with a proficiency plus your strength modifier natural 20 yeah. okay so yeah do you want me to just roll 1d 20 minus 1 uh yep 1d 20 plus your proficiency plus your strength modifier so i have a plus 5 to my attack so i just do plus 5 minus 1 yep hey and that one <laughs> oh no Fub tub, fub tub. My kidney. Oh no, my kidney. No, my only weakness. You lunge past an enemy, so you, you kind of go to bite for him. You miss um, because your melee you're, uh, was able to use the reaction to perform an attack of opportunity. Um, the target can perform an opportunity attack of an ally with. Oh wow. Okay. So it's it's basically going to get to like backhand you for trying to bite at it. Ow. Um, Better not. But you know what? I don't think I don't I don't think he is going to. Actually, I think he's just gonna I think he's Oh no. No, I think he's just gonna turn you around so that you literally cannot bite him. No. No, I can't talk at all. So you were you were <laughs> he, he's just trying to basically stop you from doing anything that you can um to to, to hurt him at this point. No need to bite. We be home soon. <laughs> Alright. Asan, it's your turn. 
I think I'm going to use all 30 feet of his movement, so 5, 10, 15 to get right behind it, and then 20, 25, 30 to get, like, directly in front of it so it can't go any further. Uh-huh. And then he's going to take out a sword and aim for its legs. Okay. Did Maggie give Aeson an inspiration? Just curious. I don't I think... mean, she kind of can. No, she she bit something last round, so she didn't give any well, inspiration. Well, she has a bonus action to give it inspiration. Be like, hey, yeah, but she's going to do something inspiring right now. Her face is stuck into a troll's belly. I'm not doing nothing with that in my face. All right. Well, let's see what I can manage. <laughs> By the way, the smell of this thing. I know. Uh, 25 will probably hit, right? 25 will hit. For eight points of damage. Not bad. Very bad. That was a minimum damage roll. I mean, that still did damage. Yeah. Well, and I'm also in front of it. And my bonus action will be to unwavering mark it. So I like to scream at this thing and tell it to make sure it it wants my it wants my tuchus. Hmm. Okay. So you're going to unwavering mark it? Yep. Use my third one of the day. All right. So that means it now has disadvantage on any attack roll that isn't for you. And any times it makes an attack against something that isn't you, you get a reaction to attack it. Well, no, only if it hits it. If it hits it, and then I can use my bonus action to do a third attack. Yes. All right, Willem. You are on the shoulder of this thing. You've just witnessed uh, uh, a lot of crap. (laughs) Um, But most importantly, in front of you, you have seen... Uh, a spell kind of blast a nice little crevice in the back of this thing's skull. He's gonna be a little freaked out. Just a little bit. So, instinctively, he's gonna cast, like, one of the strongest spells he knows. Okay. By being freaked out, he's gonna cast Hunger of Hadar. Sorry, Maggie. (laughs) And all of us. Oh, man. All right. All of you. And yourself. Yep, and myself. Let's see what Hunger of Hadar does here. Let's uh, let's go ahead and read this out, shall we? Uh, you open a gateway to the dark uh, between the stars, a region infested with unknown horrors. A 20-foot spear radius of blackness and bitter cold appears, centered on a point within range, uh, lasting for a duration. This void... Uh, is filled with a cacophony cacophony of sauce whiffers and slurping sounds that can be heard up to 30 feet away. No light, magical or otherwise, can illuminate the area, uh, and the creature fully within the area are blinded. The void creates uh, a warp in the fabric of space. Uh, The area is difficult terrain. Any creature that starts its turn takes 2d6 cold damage. Any creature that ends its turn in the area must succeed at dexterity saving throw or take 2d6 acid damage. So let me, um, let's, let's go ahead and uh, I'll, I'll do this real quick. Uh, so 20 feet. So even she would be blinded. Everybody currently oh, shit. is blinded. And is about to take damage at the beginning of every turn. Every round. Yeah, and the end of our <laughs> turns too. If you if you end in there, yes. But we're blind, so it's hard to get out. Of it. <laughs> yeah. Um, Charity. Um, first things off the bat, you're starting your area insides. You will take two d six damage. That is seven damage. Out. Willem, plotting his escape. <laughs> Oh no, oh no, oh no. Bad mistake, bad mistake, bad mistake. And it said that um, magical or otherwise can't illuminate it, right? No. Uh, But she watched it go about 15 feet ahead, right? Yeah, hold on. Let's see if it does say if it's a mat. It does say uh, any creature. Uh, Cacophony of whispers and slurping. Yeah. Sphere of blackness, bitter cold. It doesn't say that it's magical darkness. Yeah, it says no light, magical, or otherwise can illuminate the area. Oh, uh, okay, so there it does say it's magical. Yeah. Okay. So, 
my question of she knows it walked about fifteen feet ahead, right? You could you could make a general attack with disadvantage, yes. Alright. Going ahead about fifteen feet and making a disadvantage attack. We're not gonna waste a spell slot though. Okay. That's twelve. That'll miss. Nope. Alright. Alright. That's it. Edmund is is on. Oh wait, wait, wait! I need to make a dex check to see if I take damage. Oh yeah, that's right. Uh, what? It, ooh, that's a four. Not, no, it's, it, a it's a nineteen. Oh, okay. Why was it? I right? just didn't turn disadvantage off. Oh, uh, okay. So, uh, I believe that beats Willem's spell save. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You're just gonna be You're the safe. thirteen. Watch Willem take damage from his own spell and break concentration. That's a big Willem move. <laughs> All right, uh, Edmund's turn. You know what? I've I've done this for. I've I've definitely done this for Myla. I'm gonna subtract a certain amount of magical points, and then I'm gonna willingly roll in the magic chart. Oh, lovely. You gain the ability to breathe water for one day by growing gills, but you use the ability to breathe air. Oh my god. So we gotta put a fucking bubble over this kid's head now? Willem can help on his turn. (laughs) Oh no. How the hell are we supposed to do that? (laughs) Okay, so I think he's gonna drop concentration there. He's gonna fall off this guy. As he realizes that the air that he is breathing is no longer good for him. Um, so let's do a 1d6 fall damage as he falls to the ground. That is 4 damage to... And a 2d6 him. from starting his turn. In the- oh. That is true as well. How's that make him feel? Does that stress him the fuck out? That's 10. Um... Ouch! Yeah, that does. That's. I mean, that's pretty stressful. But he did just. There are did that. Slurping, there are slurping noises surrounding him in pitch black. You really want me to roll this chart again, don't I, you? I'd be very stressed about slurping noises in the pitch black. Okay. The hex. The, the ma- stop killing us. The maximum I can do is a one d twelve. Let's add that to a stress. Do it. Um, and you're gonna hear uh, a little bit more pain. Uh, Edmund's going to take another 10 um, radiant damage uh, from his his wild magic surge that went off uh, due to his stress roll. <sighs> not looking good for Edmund. Yeah, not looking good. All right. <clears throat> Troll's turn. Um, somebody's fallen off of him. It's dark. And he, he can, takes he can... six damage. Yes, he does. I am. Maybe, maybe it'll kill him. We'll see. That's a lot of damage. That's ten damage. But unfortunately, not enough to kill him immediately. God damn it! However, for the tentacles. It's darkness. He's scared. He's carrying two people. Things are getting weird. Um, he's he's moving. Um. So he's going to move over here 5, 10, 15. Can I, question, can I hear him move out of my range and just take a slash to try to disadvantage Slim? You would get disadvantage, yes. You, you, can, you can make I'll an take attack. A, I'll, I'll take Not really running, more like a hobble because his kneecap's like really messed up. <laughs> he can only move like half speed. That's an 11. That'll miss. Maggie? Fuck. I'm, I'm blind and deaf and all I smell is troll. Yeah. I'm using Thunder Wave to get my fucking self off of this guy. Alright. Hold on, give me a second. It's a cube. Alright. You're all good. I know you're, I know you're working on it. Okay, so this could potentially do it. I will say that uh, Charity, I think everybody, I think, no, I think Edmund's in it. 
Yeah, it's not going to be good. <laughs> Add is literally everybody must make a constitution saving throw. That's 20. Don't make me do it. Don't make me 20 for the it. troll. Jasper got, uh, or sorry, Willem got a 10. Mine is a 24. I just have this. <laughs> <in this toggle. laughs> 24. Jesus fucking Christ, guys. Charity, Charity, Charity will take 15 damage. A quality charity roll for a con- quality winter constitution roll. Uh, constitution roll. Also, everybody who fails gets pushed ten feet back. Now, if if they if yeah, so charity will get pushed back. How far? Five, ten, 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 ten feet. Um, you are gonna fall. So take a d six and, and fall damage. Because every five feet is a d6 for fall damage. Per player's handbook. That's three damage. All right. Five feet for d6, that escalates quick. That escalates yeah. really, really quickly. Well, he's also a nine foot tall thing, so let's just go with it. Five, ten. So, Maggie, it is your turn. You have, um, well, currently you have no movement. Now, what you haven't tried to do yet is a strength check. Because he does still technically, what, have disadvantage on strength, correct? Or, oh, we need we need you to make a constitution save because you fell off the back and took damage. Me? Let's yep. see if Hunger of Hadar continues or does not. All right, so Hunger of Hadar is gone. Uh, we had an eight for the constitution roll. Um, Hex stays on. Is that con- concentration? Or is that, uh, how long does Hex last? Let for? me check. All right, so, um, Maggie, the darkness is gone. You're no longer hearing the slurps, the sounds. You're not um, feeling the coldness. Um, you might be able to wiggle and kind of get an eye poking out and see that there's light again. Um, what would you like to do? So the darkness is gone like you see it. My thunder wave didn't work because this fucker rolled a 20. And I want to kick him in the face multiple times. But, you know, whatever. I'm going to try the strength. Why not? And I'll use lucky if it doesn't work. Can you use dex to, es- Can you use dex to escape grapples? Um, it's athletics or acrobatics. So, kind of. Oh. I- can I use my acrobatics then? Yeah, of course. What's your acrobatics bonus? We'll just add it to what you rolled. <laughs> I'm missing. <laughs> so your acrobatics gets a plus five, and your original yeah. roll was a thirteen. So thirteen plus so an eighteen. Five. Eighteen. Yeah, you'll yeah. Uh, you'll be able to. Well, actually, let's uh, let's make a roll for this guy because he oh, is. Uh, that's a twenty. You he's will... disadvantaged though because. Oh wait, no. Actually. No, he's not. Damn, Nothing gave him disadvantage, disadvantage at this point. So unfortunately, you'll you'll struggle, but it seems like this guy is he's getting his strength back. He's he's eating his wheaties. Um, Good callback to the nineties. <laughs> um. Well. Let's see. Uh, I guess that doesn't really. Get can you. I roll? Well, I can't roll lucky now, can I? Mm, you could. I mean, you could force him to. Well, no, the call's already been I mean, made. It's, already it's, D- it's, it's DM discretion whether or not you can roll. I'm going to say because I already called the... The result? The result that probably not. Um, so the, okay. thing, the thing about Lucky is you got to be on that real quick. Because once I state what happens, you can no longer apply it. Yeah, and I, I mean, why would you Lucky at 13? Well, because... She, no, what she can do is give him disadvantage. Lucky can you actually... Can, you can give disadvantage to a monster attacking you with Lucky. Oh, I did not know that. It's actually way more useful than people think. Yep, I just... It says... Uh, yeah, I'm just re- rereading it. It's a really good thing to have. It's very useful. I'll probably do it again if I'm still in this troll's grasp. Unless I get blinded again! I will say it's it's kind of my fault because as of recently I've been reminding you and I didn't okay. to remind you this time. Can she? No, you're good. Can she bardic inspiration anyone? Um, no, I'm still face first in a troll's belly. I mean, you could. I could say with that strength check because you were awfully close. You had an 18. I could say you could probably wiggle free enough to speak. 
So if you want to give somebody inspiration and you have inspiration, feel free to do it. Can I give more than one or can I only do one? Unfortunately, only one per round. Okay, that's fair. That's fair. I Charity's been blah, making blah, blah. some pretty solid hits lately. I was about to say yeah. I'm about to give it to, I'm gonna give it to Charity because everybody wants to hug this troll for some reason and it has me <laughs> and I don't want it hugging anyone else. So Charity, you're getting the inspiration because you're the only one that's been doing anything to it. So you're, here, have you're that. The, you're the only one who doesn't <laughs> want to hug her new boyfriend. No, I don't hey. want him. <laughs> All right, You're the one that wanted to hug him. Dead. Well, no, I wanted to stop him from dragging you into the woods. So, okay, there's a big You could have stabbed him. You could have stabbed him. If I stabbed you him, then he just keeps walking away. The thing right. is, if I grab him, you could have stabbed him. Zero. All right, so, um, Bardic Inspiration to Charity. Charity, you have a D8 for your next attack. If you choose or ability check, Asan, that will make it your turn. Boom. All right, he's getting the, he's getting the sword at the back of the legs. Let's see what I can roll. Come on, hot dice. Uh, that'd be a twenty because we're that'll not hit. More. And with my second attack, hold on. A twenty-seven. So twenty twenty-six points of damage. All As right. I, I, I take my my blade <clears throat> and I do like a slashing motion to the back of his knee and then I follow it up and come down across the left shoulder blade downwards. Diagonal. Okay. All right. So I've got a picture of how this is going to go. Um, Maggie, I need you to roll me a deck save. Okay. I rolled a 12. Okay. Can I do lucky just so that I can do yes, that again? Please. Okay. There a natural we go. twenty-five. This thing is going to start to tumble. You're going to see the life basically drain from its eyes, and yeah. it's going to lean forward for about an inch, and then you're going to realize this thing could fall on you. This thing is almost three hundred pounds. This thing yeah. is very heavy and very nodule and has very large tusks. You let go of its loose grip. You use your nice dexterity to kind of tip around it uh, before it thuds into the ground, making a nice crevice. Maggie's going to like breathe heavily. She'd be like, "Why in the hell were you guys trying to?" <clears throat> She's trying to like gain her composure. <sighs> I was trying to stop it from getting away. It was trying to take you away, and so I was trying to keep it from that. Well, the rest of them killed it. I mm, yes, <clears throat> she's gonna be trying to regain herself because she let that out in a burst of emotion. <laughs> she's gonna like. I will say. Uh huh. Sorry. Oh, go ahead. Uh, just as kind of that moment's happening, uh, off in the distance, you're gonna hear a faint howl. Oh God. Let's get in the cart. Uh, young man, hop in the back of the cart. We're going to get going. You want a man that blind us to come in the cart. He also jumped on the back of that troll like a brave soldier. And tried to kill Maggie's eyes are going to narrow. As long as he doesn't cast that spell again, everything will be fine. And you won't, will you, young man? I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cast it. I just got really scared. Edmund's writhing on the ground in pain. Maggie's going to run over to him. Uh, Aethon will run over with her, and he will pick him up like scoop uh wait no nope. Maggie's gonna be no, no. like Asan, wait a minute Asan's not waiting we need to get out of here there are howls I need to heal him well you can heal him in the cart <laughs> and he will scoop him up and briskly walk back to the cart all right just give me a quick strength check you're you're kind of on a, a timed mission here so let's see if, if you can muster up the strength an athletics moment. check yeah just give me an athletics 26, yeah, you, you scoop him up. He, he it, it, even through the pain, he is not interested in your contact whatsoever. Doesn't matter, my contact is stronger than his resistance. Man, at this point, he's in, he's in a lot of pain. Maggie's so, gonna rush that, over to him. Asun will gently place him in the back of the cart. Like, making, like, it is, I am placing you, not throwing you, I am placing you back in the cart. Yeah, Maggie's gonna do 
some heal wounds at level three. Okay. You're going to see there's there's lacerations. There are um, all types of cuts and mangles. His his clothes are not looking uh, great right now, and they're kind of drenched. Uh, so that's 17 healing. Uh, that'll kind of cut away the um, the cut, cut away the the bleeding. And, and I was gonna say, and Asan will ride a uh, quote uh, air quote crossbow with Charity because I think Charity was the one who has proficiency in land vehicles. Um, if Willem tries to get anywhere near Edmund, she's just like glaring at him, like "Don't you touch my son!" Basically. <laughs> See, Willem feels kind of responsible for it, so he's going to try and help. Is there a role that I can do to see what's wrong? Uh, you can take a quick medicine glance. What about an investigation? Would that help at all, either? Um, I mean, yeah, the investigation might get... The, and medicine would give you the most information, or arcana, um, and investigation could give you, I mean... You don't know much about him, so it's really not going to give you much. Uh, the basics that you know is he's brave, uh, kind of, or stupid, and that he casts magic. That's that's about all you know of him. Why not both? I'll cast um, medicine. Right. Cast medicine. I'll cast medicine, hey. whoops. That's an eight. Um, he, he got beat up real bad in that fight. Uh, not only did he take laceration damage from your spell... Um, not only did he take damage from himself, he took damage from the fall. He's pretty, he's pretty bad. Um, in, in, in game terms, out of game. Yeah, that's why Maggie is not letting Willem get anywhere near Edmund right now. Willem's gonna try and talk to Willem in his head. Wait, what? Talking to yourself in your own head? No, talking to Edmund, sorry. Okay. Using um, Awakened Mind, is that how that works? Yeah. Um, uh, I believe Awakened Mind allows you to basically speak to somebody in the mind of a person that you can see. So the knowledge gives you the chance to the minds of other creatures. You can communicate telepathically that you can see within 30 feet. Yep. Um, you don't need to share language. It understands your telepic utterance. Um, yeah. He's just The only requisite is the SC understand one language, and I think you're good there. Okay, he's gonna like profusely apologize for the spell and um, ask him, "Is there anything I can do that can help with this? What? Tell me what's wrong." You're probably gonna take this is probably from the pain, but in your head, all you're gonna get is a big gargled "fuck you." Okay, I deserve that. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, he seems to not really be in the mood to talk he's in pain at this point so it's it's he's gonna bite you know um so he's gonna snap at you on that one um that howl that you heard you're gonna hear it again and it's gonna be closer maggie's gonna be like charity asan let's go um asan like i said is riding uh crossbow with charity because charity is the one piloting this beast and so he is up literally with his crossbow ready to blast anything in the face that gets up or gets into range. Charity's gonna get us started. We're gonna start uh, going as quickly as we can. Okay. So you have five people in a cart and you have a mule carrying, correct? Or did you have two I mules? I believe so. I believe you bought, purchased two meals for the price. Yeah, we I did. think we have yeah. two. So you, you, you got a decent gallop. Um, let me check something real quick, because you guys are going to keep going. It's it's getting dark at this point. And you guys, that, that battle took a bit. It, I mean, well, probably not the battle, but that travel. You've taken most of the day. It's, it's getting dark. This person just ran out just before you guys could take a break, um, kind of decide whether you wanted to end for the day. And now you guys are running through this forest. Um, as the, the sun kind of fades, as the trees kind of come in on each side, uh, thicker and thicker that they get as you hear the galloping of these, these, these creatures and then the, the sound of the wheels and the cobblestone as the, the cart bounces back and forth slightly, um, you're going to hear the patter 
of what seems to be some sort of uh, kind of like a canine uh, pat of, of, of something hitting the ground on the cobblestone road behind you. Um, uh, if anybody would like, I think the two people, well, he's not going to get a check, but Maggie, if you would like to, um, you can make a perception check. Uh, can I? Guys... Shotgun? Um, it's, it's occurring at the rear. I'm going to do Lucky one more time. Can Willow? Okay. okay. Well, that was... <laughs> I got an 11 out of 11. Can Willem try perception? Sure. Um, I think we're gonna. Uh, well, you're you're kind of past that. You're a little bit enamored with trying to talk to. Plus, that's a natural one. I think yeah, you're just exactly. gonna be kind of concentrated on Edmund right now. Um, so that's an eleven. Um, Maggie, you're gonna see the shape of something large. Um, one could probably say dire wolf size. And it's running after this card. And she's going to look over at Willem. What the hell did you drink, bring to us? I don't know. I was just running and things chasing me. And Who are you? My, my, my name's Willem. I'm a friend of Scoob's. I was going back to find him. And then I came into the woods and I got lost and stuff followed me. So I thought instead of running past you, I'd warn you about it and we could run off. Okay, I'm going to do blindness deafness on it. Okay. Uh, range that you can make with the constitution saving throw. If it fails... Alright, let's do a constitution saving throw. Let Are you going to blind it or deafen it? going to blind it. Right. So, constitution? Yes. That's a 14 with a plus 6. Yeah, it's uh, my spell sees DC save is 14, so probably meets it, beats it, right? Yep, that's how we've been playing. Yep. Okay, so uh, let me kind of give you a look at what's kind of going on here for your card and such. Oh, crap, I gotta put that card. It's in math and background. It's the dice. Um, so, of course, it, it doesn't, it doesn't go off. It doesn't, uh, seem to slow it down. Um, and it's keeping up with this cart. Um, it, it is making its way. Um, I could say I could give you another perception check. It, it is actually gaining about five feet every so often towards the cart. I'm going to do it behind it so that it doesn't hit us, but I'm going to cast this with my last third level spell. Okay. Hypnotic pattern. You create a, uh, create a twisting pattern of colors that weave through the air inside a 30 foot cube range. The pattern uh, appears for a moment and vanishes. Each creature in the area sees the pattern must make a wisdom saving throw. On a failed save, the creature becomes charmed for the duration while charmed by the spell. The creature is incapacitated and has a spell a speed of zero. The spell ends um, for an affected creature. Okay, so let's go ahead and do a what saving throw? Uh, wisdom. Wisdom. Yeah, you're right. Come on, open up. Oh, it's right in front of me. It's not opening. Give me a second. That's okay. That's an 18 save with a flat zero bonus. Well. <clears throat> okay. Um, I will say that as it gets a, probably about five feet closer, it's probably about ten foot away from the cart, everybody is going to start hearing this pattering getting louder and louder and louder. Um, anybody who now wishes to at least notice it can notice it. Um, yeah, this this thing is tailing. If anybody would like to make a perception check, you can at this time. I indeed will. Save for those who have already rolled one. It's a six. All right, so you're not unless you want to give me advantage. Unless you want to give me advantage for some reason. Unfortunately, no. Charity. 
Mm, no, I think she's going to focus on keeping the cart straight and moving. All right. Would anybody like to do anything that might distract this thing from moving forward? Um, can I light a arrow with like a light a bolt with anything and like fire it? Uh, do you have anything that lights real quick? A uh, torch. Is the torch lit? Uh, if you said it's getting dark, then I probably would have lit it. You said it was like getting dark, dark, so I probably would have lit Darker. it. But you guys went straight from the battle onto the cart and are now running. Depends on how dark it was, though. If it was dark, I would have lit it if it wasn't. All right. uh, give me a quick 1d100. If it's above a 50, sure. If it's below, you were preoccupied with getting away. All right. One. So yeah, you got one. You can light one up real quick, kind of set it to the side or edge it into the cart and kind of move it over, light the thing if you wrap some fabric around the top of the, uh, the yeah, arrow. Yeah, I'll do that. Okay. I'll put a little bit of tinder or something around the tip of the arrow. Uh, give a give a quick uh, give a quick shot. All right, so just give a quick crossbow shot. Mm-hmm. That will miss. I'm not trying to hit it. I'm just trying to shoot. No, it's it's. Here's what's going to happen though. Um, everybody uh, who has already previously done a perception check can make a perception check as this thing whizzes by and you actually get an actual bit of detail from this creature. Let's see how much anybody can kind of get if they choose. You said a perception? I'm sorry. Perception check, correct. What the fuck? Nine, nine. Nine, nine, nine. Five. Oh, it is dark tonight. <clears throat> oh man, that didn't even eliminate much of anything. All right, so this thing is going to move to the very back of the cart and the first thing Maggie is going to realize this wolf is wearing clothes. Maggie's going to call out. She's going to be like, it's wearing clothing. I think, wait, Charity. She's going to turn around and look back. Maggie's going to be like, stop the card, stop the card. I think I know who it is. She'll yank the mules oh, damn to a stop. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you not as slick as you think you are. All right, I think he's going to need to roll a dex then. I'll do a dex save. Because that that might hurt. <laughs> oh, poor baby. That's a 16. Um, I, I think, though, even with his momentum, he, he's... You, you know when a dog, like, tries to jump up on the couch and they just barely get it and, like, their hind oh, legs no. hit the wood of the... And you can hear the... Oh. Yeah, that's kind of what he's going to get. He's not going to be hurt or anything, but it, it that didn't look pleasant. Um, he'll just kind of get up into the cart, kind of standing in the center. And this thing is going to start to stand up. This thing is going to tower... At probably almost 10 feet. No, not even 10. I think this thing rounds out at around nine, uh, nine foot three inches. Uh, so it's it's a big, burly sucker. Um, uh, can you give me a recap of what that is? I think Everett was his name. Uh huh. Okay. There's, I mean, we still don't know for sure. Well, yeah, I mean, uh, this is when Charity is going to turn and look up and just Everett? Um, uh, roll me a quick perception check. Let's just see if you can just see it off the bat, if, if there is anything to see. Watch me fail. I'll give you inspiration. Da -da -da. <laughs> I'm serious when I say that. Do, do you have inspiration? Yes, I do. I still have three. All right. Yeah, go ahead and, uh, if you like, you can add your inspiration to that. It's a 1d8. That's a 13 still, right? Yeah. Um, uh, I pass as a 14, if that helps. So here's, here's, <laughs> the, here's the thing, though. You've never seen Everett in that form. That's fair. We That's saw fair. him start to turn, though. No, I will what say, though, the one on thing that face. does... The one thing that definitely does look familiar is the clothing. Um, hands down, it, it's it's... 
it's it's going to give it away. And the one thing that's hanging around his neck is that silver, that silver trinket. Uh, and so kind of you'll see the fur slowly go down. You'll see him kind of relax. And then eventually Everett uh, will be standing in the center uh, kind of of the cart. And you kind of see the glare of the moonlight kind of reflect against the uh, the actual pupils of his eyes. Um, and it, he'll take a less aggressive stance. Baggy's going to hug him. Everett! Okay, before this, Asan was posturing up ready for another fight. Well, that would have been bad. Yeah, yeah. but, like, he's going to protect his family. Yeah. All right, guys, I think that is a perfect place to end it for tonight. Yeah. Yay, what a wonderful episode. Y'all are really good. Hi everybody, I'm Corey. I'm the Dungeon Master for Opportunity Roll. You guys know me. Thanks for watching the episode with us. Uh, we had a lot of fun. Uh, excited to see what's going to happen with Etta and Max and all that. And this new uh, interesting character played by Jasper. I also want to give a thanks to uh, Purple Planet Music uh, for using all the tracks that we can find at Purple Planet Music to kind of put in the background for you guys to enjoy. And I also want to thank Cobalt Press for their Tomes of Beasts uh, and this this other lovely Creature Codex book that I'm reading through now. Uh, if you want to find out more from us, make sure that you check out our Facebook and our email. Uh, if you want to just ask questions or get to know any of the, the people who play here, uh, send us an email at opportunityroll.podcast at gmail.com. Uh, that's about all for me, but thank you guys for listening, and remember, keep your opportunities open. <laughs> <laughs>